Thank you for your for your participation today uh, seminar. Uh, as a as a TSU member, today our topic is uh, the principle of star imaging. I see this to be a very important feature for the beginner learning star system. Uh, today our speaker is a uh, Dr. Gu Chongshen, Dr. Ku, received his master in remote sensing science and technology. Uh, Dr. Ku received his master in remote sensing science and technology and PhD in compute uh, in communication engineer, or both from National Central University Taiwan. Dr. Ku is currently a research associate with the Department of Electrical Engineering, National Taipei University of Technology, Taiwan. His research interests include radar signal processing and SAR image algorithm denial, microwave circuit and antenna measures, measurements, microwave remote sensing, wireless communications, and uh, SAR system hardware and software code denial. Uh, uh, Professor Ku not only a very good in SAR system, but also he's a he's a uh, he's a uh, very outstanding uh, in uh, teaching the SAR class uh, in NTUT. So now let's welcome Dr. Ku to deliver his talk, uh, titled "The Principle of uh, SAR Imaging." Let's have a, a, a round of applause to Dr. Ku. Deeper, he's a he's a talk today. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, Professor John to introduce me, and it's my great honor to give you a talk about the principle of synthetic aperture radar image. Okay, and this is the online that we will show you today, and that includes some material about synthetic what is synthetic aperture radar, and it's kind of uh, image radar, and how do we form the uh, SAR image. And the final things I would like to talk about is um, if we want to um, do some simulation to the SAR or to get some image, what can we do on the um, simulation? Um, include uh, talking about the uh, EM wave behavior and also numerical processing. Okay. Um, this is the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Uh, as you know, you can see it from uh, gamma ray, X-ray to um, a visible spectrum and microwave and frequency uh, FM, AM and long radio wave. So why do we use microwave here? Because uh, for the optical sensor, that works only in the daytime. And also, um, if we um, use the <clears throat> like IR system, they cannot penetrate the, um, the cloud because it's covered from the uh, above of the earth. So, uh, according to the uh, the property of microwave, that can penetrate cloud and also operate in whole days. Uh, that we use in um, uh, star system. So as you can see, uh, we have plenty of bands, uh, different bands in uh, microwave from P band, L band, um, C, X, and K, U, K, A, and K, A. Um, some of them are used for satellite, uh, especially for L, C, X, and um, for X, K, U, that's utilized in uh, like airborne or um, uh, UAV SARS recently, and uh, all of this band can be applied in the uh, ground base. Okay. So uh, let's show some background about the uh, SAR. And SAR is a specific radar system. So what is the radar system original <coughs> function? It used the uh, EM wave to uh, determine the range. It can use the EM wave to determine the range to the uh, target via the, um, the time delay. And we can also use the um, antenna directivity to to, um, to give this direction. And as we know, we have a Doppler shift, uh, shift to measure the uh, target speed here. So using these three 
uh, property, we can to uh, we can form a two dimensional uh, image. Um, and actually, what is SAR? You can think about that. We just put a star system on a platform and to uh, create a very long virtual antenna by uh, signal analyze. So it is a simple um, formula to show from the real aperture to uh, the thin aperture radar here. And this is a, a, a simple example to show the uh, best, basic SAR system diagram. As you can see, we have a, a clock here, which can uh, provide uh, precisely a uh, clock to the um, oscillator. And with the advanced technology here, we can use the direct, uh, direct uh, things size here and to generate the signal, what we want, um, and then transform into the uh, digital to analog uh, converter into the uh, transmitter board. This is the a splitter. One way is go to the uh, receive board as a res uh, re reference uh, function signal. And one way is go to the uh, power amplifier and then go to TX antenna to transmit the EM wave toward the uh, uh, target. And after reflect the receive the target, uh, receive the signal from the RX antenna, uh, the signal goes through the low noise amplifier and then go to the um, bandpass filter to fill out some noise and deconvolute or demodulate with the reference signal. We can have an intermediate uh, signal and then also go through the uh, low pass filter to get to also filter out some high frequency noise. And then uh, after uh, the analog to digital converter to get the um, the final echo signal. Also, we need to the control board. What which has a computer for storage and for mate. And and this is shows the uh, radar system here. And <clears throat> of course, we need to put it in put it on the play phone which can provide some motion, location, and status information, include uh, like uh, GPS or IMU uh, information. Okay, so that is a simple one. So if we put that into our um, systematic simulation, we have this form like this. And as you can see, it's very complicated. And at the beginning of here, we have a, a linear frequency uh, signal, uh, I will explain later why we apply the uh, LFM signal here. And after generating the uh, LFM signal, and it transmit purse by purse, and then modulate with a carrier frequency, and then go through the uh, transmit board. And this part include the uh, play phone information, um, such as uh, antenna pattern, um, the motion, or is, uh, or we can say the trace, and this part include the uh, uh, environment uh, information here, and then receive to the uh, receive antenna and demodu uh, demodulation go to the um, uh, echo signal what we, we record, and then this is another part that we do the uh, numerical processing. For the first part is to do the uh, range uh, compression by using the reference um, signal as a, a filter to fill, to do the convolution for the uh, range compression. And then in another direction, we call that ASMOS compression. We estimate the Doppler information as a, a reference function and uh, to uh, set up the matching filter to fill, uh, to do the matching filter on the uh, SMART direction to get the final uh, SAR image. So 
let's uh, put in detail why we apply the linear frequency modulation signal here. And this is this figure shows the signal um, uh, times uh, time series with, uh, as you can see, when time increase, the frequency increase. So if you take a Fourier uh, transform, you can see the spectrum like uh, when time go, go up and the frequency will come up at the um, figure shows here. So if we put a system here to transmit LFM signal, we can use the uh, time delay to determine the uh, location of target here. So um, for a system, we can see there is a near uh, location or far location. By <clears throat> there are two ways to, um, to get the location. One way is to use the uh, reference signal as a metric filter to do the convolution. And the other way is to use the B frequency to determine the um, time delay as the function, uh, as the formula here and we can use the um, B frequency to determine the target location here. And also the uh, range resolution can be determined by the uh, bandwidth. And this is the two example here. And if we do some numerical uh, uh, simulation, if we set up a target here, we can <clears throat> see compared to the measurement um, data is a very, uh, has a good agreement with uh, uh, measurement data. And also if we set two target here and two target is also uh, in good property here. And this slide shows why we, uh, also shows why we use LFN signal to compare with a simple pulse. And if we want to transmit a, a, a EM wave from space, we need to have a very uh, large power, and then the uh, the pulse length will be a uh, tau one here. So after matching filter, uh, you can see the the resolution will equal to uh, speed of light multiplied by the um, tau one divided by two, and it's very correct. If we want to uh, get finer uh, range resolution, we need to shorten the post length. But in this case, uh, the uh, power will decrease. So that it is a, a dilemma for um, the, um, if we apply the pulse here. So if we use the uh, LFM signal here for the, for its good advantage for the um, uh, time and bandwidth product. So we can see the resolution is according to its bandwidth here. So that's why we use the LFM signal in the radar system because it control it is controllable um, by the uh, bandwidth. And another question, uh, another common question is, why do we use side looking for the SAS system? Um, as you can see, this is a top of view um, for the SAS, uh, SAS system. And the circle one is the equal <coughs> distance. And this curve shows the um, lines of equal Doppler. So if we use uh, both of, um, if we use down looking uh, system, we cannot identify the uh, signal from um, this part or this part if you if the target is at the uh, same distance. Uh, the, on the other hand, <clears throat> so if we want to use the side looking here, we just have a one direction signal here. So why we use side looking? Uh, the simple question is, uh, from the downlooking uh, system, it's hard to identify the uh, of the direction signal. And this uh, animation shows the um, uh, syntax aperture processing. We collect the data from the different uh, different pos position uh, of the on the uh, syntax lens. So it will form this curve. 
for the uh, the range R here. So we can use this formula to calculate the, uh, the phase from different position and to get its Doppler frequency to by divide by the uh, to by the uh, time with uh, <coughs> phase term and for the total length uh, intact length we have uh, this length uh, this longer uh, intact uh, antenna and the total target exposure time will will be uh, for the uh, total length of antenna divided by the uh, velocity of platform. So total leaping wave will uh, have this term in um, this formula. Then we have a time resolution uh, from the uh, one divided by the um, Doppler bandwidth. So the space re resolution for SAR system will be equal to real aperture antenna divided by two. That is the uh, principle for the star aperture. So if we, uh, again, so if we transmit the pulse uh, or LFM signal pulse by pulse from like this way, pulse by pulse here and with a different position, we can, according to the uh, antenna pattern and we can collect the uh, amplitude like this turn or we can from the um, echo signal amplitude like this term. And this is shows the echo signal in phase um, diagram uh, figure. So after we collect the uh, echo signal, uh, there are several uh, outstanding uh, image algorithm. The first one is range Doppler algorithm, which use the, uh, the range, the uh, range which use the reference signal to do the uh, range compression and use the Doppler information to do the SMAS compression. So it calls range Doppler algorithm. And the second one use the chirp um, information to do the, um, uh, to do the uh, image uh, formation. And the third one, we call that omega k algorithm because you use the um, k space to from the image. So take the uh, range Doppler algorithm, uh, for example, as I said before, and we if we get our echo signal here and uh, the use the uh, um, preference signal as the metric filter to do the range compression, and then do the free transform in uh, SMAS and use the um, Doppler information to do the uh, SMAS compression. So we form the, uh, the final uh, SAR image. So this, uh, this slide shows some um, example how we um, processing the SAR data. And after we collect the, data, the echo signal uh, among the, uh, the synthetic lens, we can have this data here, and this is a slim uh, range plane on the slim plane. And also it is uh, formed into the uh, complex data like this. And doing the range compression, we have, uh, um, you can see uh, some uh, targets is along the range direction here. And if we do the, uh, Matrix filter in as much direction. We have a single look SAR data in um, two dimensional two dimensional image, and then apply the multi look. And this is a, a very common question: Why we do? Why we use uh, multi look for the SAR data? Because we want to remove the speckle. What is speckle? Is uh, um, the interference. So normally we say. Uh, to eliminate the interference, we need to apply the multi-look to form the uh, final focus image. And then we can use the uh, one control point to uh, map the SAR data on the uh, optical map, uh, like this way. So as you can see, the final image is very uh, good agreement with uh, um, optical map and 
without any uh, noise for the um, like cloud or some environment. So we also can do the uh, SAR uh, experiment in the um, or measurement in indoor. So take this for example, we do this in a chamber and we put the model in the uh, sink center and to stand with uh, uh, total length is 2.12 meter. And in K band with uh, uh, transmit bandwidth five gigahertz. And as you can see this uh, focus image here, and uh, we know that for the uh, water, that is a uh, surface scattering. So the amplitude is low and the vehicle we use the conductor. So uh, if reflection is very strong here and also show some uh, shadow here. And this part is a concrete structure. So um, will some um, <coughs> double bounce signal shows here or also for the age shows here. And we also use the um, ground based star system to moni uh, monitor um, mountain slide and to use the uh, motion controller with uh, a play phone and also the uh, vector, vector network analyzer and to use personal computers to synchronize the, these two um, parts and to form the to collect the uh, echo signal and then do the image formation to get final. So as you can see here, some features are very good according to the um, um, optical map. And this part shows the uh, C band and we use the total synthetic lens is uh, 1.4 meter. And we also do some like uh, airborne star image processing uh, on the site of uh, Zhanghua Coastal Industrial Park here. And as you can see, the star image is very good um, quality to mapping some <coughs> feature here. And we also put some uh, corner reflector to use as a ground control point. And <coughs> why we use uh, corner reflect here? Because uh, corner reflect provides stable uh, radar protection. And also it can use uh, to do the uh, polarization analyze and to provide a theoretical scattering, uh, scattering mechanism here. And one thing I need to be mentioned here because um, some uh, some place we cannot place the um, corner reflector. So there is another thing I would like to introduce to you. Uh, it calls active radar uh, collab uh, collaborator here. That use the FPGA to control the transmit board and then generate artificial uh, signal and to do some um, things. So. For example, like here, um, there is uh, one uh, target here. So the uh, focus image shows one target here. If we use time delay or we use uh, the uh, digital uh, time delay here, we can <coughs> generate the uh, except our original target and we can have three uh, extra uh, time delay or extra target here if we apply the time delay um, te technique. And also we can use the, uh, this technique to uh, do in another direction. We use the Doppler shift to generate the uh, signal. So original for this uh, uh, instrument, we only have one target here, but if we artificial uh, create the um, signal here, we can have uh, extra six signal. Why is, uh, uh, is in pairs? Because uh, if we transform into a um, um, spectrum domain, um, the signal will in pairs uh, appear here. So this is a circuit like here and we can uh, generate our and in the middle part is the uh, original signal and the other part is artificial signal that we generate.
then if we uh, if we take a look for the star image, and arc is placed in the middle of the um, uh, center, and then the signal here that is the um, the artificial signal generates into the star image without any corner reflector placed on that location. So for this uh, instrument that can use for uh, radiometric calibration, also for the geometric uh, calibration here. And go back to the um, um, radar system, we can see, um, as I say, that is very complicated system. And also um, some data is inaccessible. And or we can say we get uh, SAR data is not are not so easy to get the uh, um, data due to some codes a lot or some um, <clears throat> government behavior or something like this. So <clears throat> normally we use simulation to do this um, uh, star image. And most of uh, simulation is based on the uh, model we call point target model. That is a uh, pure mathematical uh, algorithm or pure mathematical model. Uh, we use the uh, single target or a single point to generate the sorrow data and then apply the, uh, the like uh, a range Doppler algorithm to form the focus image here. And this model has some advantage like uh, you can use this uh, model for the SAR for the SAR system design and to validate uh, uh, the parameters and also do the um, comparison between the image algorithm. And as you can see, this is the result that if you apply the point target model, this is for the uh, one target. But if we uh, use that into the uh, two target, you can see here, uh, this is this is the uh, uh, the silos uh, superposition, but it, that is not a target interaction. So, according to this behavior, we can say, based on the point target model, we don't have a physical property here, and also the uh, scattering characteristic for this model. So, and also I uh, use this to demonstrate why we want to show you how to demonstrate, how to simulate uh, uh, SAR in another way. As you can see, if we place a, a place two target here and transmit a EM wave toward these two targets, and then that will uh, interact with uh, um, targets, both of them. And also that has a possibility that the uh, signal go from this target to this target and then reflect to the um, receive signal. So, <clears throat> and also another reference shows that uh, radar can measure the amplitude and the phase, uh, the point in or the position. Like based on the point target, there is only isotropic scatter, but in normal thing, uh, in natural thing, we have a, a plenty of like a uh, multiple interaction. So radar can uh, only measure the part of egg hole uh, reflect back to the antenna. Uh, that's the reason. And th this expense, uh, example shows some um, interaction between the uh, EM wave and the target. Uh, so the for the smooth surface reflection, um, you can see the under in the star image that is uh, very dark in the pixel color, and if we see some like a raw surface reflection, we get uh, uh, some bright uh, pixel color here. And then, if you take a look for the uh, vegetation, the pixel color uh, become a uh, brighter more. And then if you have a double bounce for the like uh, um, vegetation and water or something like a man-made structure, it will show a uh, totally bright or uh, white color here in uh, SAR system, in SAR image. So, <clears throat> so normally we say uh, to form a SAR image, 
there is a two part. The first part is we call the EM wave interaction with a uh, uh, target, and then also include some uh, playphone information and uh, uh, polarization setting. And at this part, if you in the uh, real uh, star system, it collects by the uh, radar system. And if we do that in simulation way, we can use two ma uh, several methods like uh, PO, uh, GO, SBR, uh, physical uh, optics, um, and uh, geometric optics shooting bouncing ray, like for example, like this. And also we can use four wave analyzer to do some acceleration here to generate the uh, uh, SAR echo signal and then apply the numerical processing here. And this part I already introduced uh, previous, so I didn't mention here. And let's take a look if we apply this uh, method for the uh, SAR simulation. And this is a, a, a figure shows uh, the, the measurement setup. So, and we apply the um, carrier frequency at Ka band with a uh, uh, 10 gigahertz bandwidth. And also use the uh, real antenna app uh, uh, bandwidth to take a, a measurement here. So as you can see, so for the uh, point target, it shows the uh, pure sync function here, as it mentioned in the um, uh, range profile. But for the uh, our method, we can not only see the target location, also see some um, EM behavior we call creeping, uh, creeping wave here. So normally when the uh, EM wave go through this way and it will creep in wave and then reflect back. So this has shown some time delay here. That's uh, very interesting here for the, um, our method. And also we do some, we can use some different dialect uh, property in the material like a uh, uh, 208 relative permittivity uh, 72 or 12.9 and we can see the difference if we apply different material the time delay is so uh, so different for um, these three and we can see this is very good agreement with uh, theoretically and the simulation result and we also use uh, this method to um, show some um, ability to do the multi-layer case. So if uh, the metal collide with Teflon, you can see uh, the, the metal uh, dominate the scattering um, behavior. And if we the, uh, the CG collide with a Teflon, uh, Teflon, you can see some uh, different scattering behavior in this figure. And also uh, for the GAS is a, a, a very common um, material in a semiconductor with a tablon. You can see a very interesting delay here. And also we can use this simulation method to see the interaction between two targets. So according to this uh, animation, you can see both the two metal sphere with a different spacing their interaction will decrease when the spacing increase. That is in that is basically in our knowledge, right? And also for the two uh, dialect sphere, uh, it shows uh, not only the interaction between two targets and also the uh, the transmit signal be between the uh, for the target for the dielectric target, and also. If we apply that for the multi-layer target, we can see the interaction uh, dismissed uh, more uh, faster than the uh, two metal sphere in this case. And another case shows the three by three um, sphere 
in uh, both in range and SMAS direction, we can see very uh, different, very different results from the metal targets and the dielectric targets. So you can see strong interaction is between targets here. And for the dielectric target case, uh, interaction is stronger than the target. And we also can use simulation to determine the system bandwidth. As you can see, lower bandwidth, we cannot identify the um, material, but with a lot bandwidth, we can um, use this to identify the, uh, the material according to the result. And also, you you can see the results for the interacting. If the uh, bandwidth or not, we can see the um, interaction between two targets is uh, clear to identify. And also the um, for the multi-targets, if the uh, bandwidth or not means the uh, range resolution is or not, you can identify the um, not only the targets and also the um, interaction. And another thing I would like to mention here is the biostatic. And so the common system we know about the uh, tandem X, which calls uh, Terrasa X added for the uh, digital elevation measurement uh, star system. We can use this um, configuration to do the um, comparison between the monostatic and bistatic, you can see different scattering behavior between the uh, monostatic and uh, bistatic uh, system for both of um, the same material. It will cause uh, different scattering um, behavior in the um, focus image. And for the two metal sphere here, and you can see the uh, bistatic case, the interaction dismiss um, faster than the um, monostatic one. And also you can see uh, two by two targets um, for the monostatic, not only for target and the strong uh, interaction here, but for the uh, bistatic, only the interaction here shows the uh, ability that uh, the method to do some uh, interesting simulation. And we also use the uh, chamber experiment uh, to uh, validate our method. And as you can see, when two targets, uh, the spacing between two targets increase and the, in, uh, the interaction will uh, dismiss or disappear in between the two targets according to the um, result. And also for the uh, color reflector, uh, we use the um, L-band to simulate, and then also use the uh, real antenna pattern. And as you can see, for the triangle uh, color reflector, it provides the HHOV, say, a uh, pole uh, information, and cross pole is very low here. so. <clears throat> theoretically, is a, a very good agreement with a theoretically um, <clears throat> mechanism here. And for the uh, dihedral, it also provides uh, copole information uh, with a lower uh, cross pole in the return power. So it also shows here with a very good property. And if we rotate the dihedral uh, corner reflector for uh, 45 degree, it provides a cross pole here. So <clears throat> this slide shows the um, for the rotate uh, dihedral, it provides uh, uh, the cro cross pole uh, power and lower uh, copole information here. And if we apply the uh, pole based decomposition, poly based to see the uh, um, the result, you can see for the double bounce, we we say this is the uh, in the red color, and for the uh, 
surface scattering we set in the um, blue color and for the um, <clears throat> volume scattering we set into the green color. So according to these two um, corner reflector, we can get a very good uh, property for the um, using this method. And to simulate the uh, more complicated targets, we use the cargo truck with a different uh, aspect angle from zero to uh, 359 degree. And this shows five degree apart. And as you can see, when the truck is ro uh, rotated the truck, we can get a, a different result from the uh, image. And to compare with uh, uh, measurement and simulation, we can see some uh, very interesting um, feature here for the like uh, the connection and also from the um, this connection here. And we also use the uh, Buckingham Palace to do some simulation with a different aspect angle. As you can see, if we construct a, a three-dimensional um, CAD model and put that into the um, simulation, we can get a, a different uh, view angle of the uh, star image to get the uh, focus here to compare which, or you can image that when you rotate your hand, you can get a different view of your hand, right? So uh, for this um, result, you can see um, SAR take a measurement from a different view of the angle of the, uh, this structure. And we also do some simulations for the uh, uh, random surface uh, because a uh, random surface is a natural thing such as like a soil, snow, or ocean surface. So uh, take this for example, we use x band and with uh, some um, statics um, parameter to generate the surface and then put into the simulation and which shows the, um, the different um, feature here for the uh, HH and the VH here. And we also can use this um, method to apply in uh, recently is very uh, popular technology called artificial intelli uh, intelligence. We can uh, generate uh, uh, the uh, focused image for the airplane or aircraft or both of like we called MD-18 or like uh, B-757 or uh, C-1. Uh, 130, for example, like here. And this result shows like 85% uh, accuracy for the uh, object detection. So according to this uh, method, we can use uh, simulation data as some reference data to do the like deep, on the deep learning and uh, some um, research in the future. And this is all my uh, presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Professor Ku. And uh, he's a very interesting uh, talk about uh, talking about uh, the fundamental principle of science imaging. We not only learn from from Doctor uh, Ku is a is a expert, but also we know that there's a, a lot of uh, different application of SAR system. So here we open, uh, here we open the uh, Q&A section. And please, if you got any question, you are welcome to, to ask Dr. Ku any questions. Thank you, Professor Q. I have a question. What is the difficulty in building a bi-static star system? Uh, you, you mean the difficulty to build up a bi-static star system, right? Yes. And yes. Um, bi-static 
uh, sound system means you place the transmitter and receive um, in different platform. And so uh, the first thing that the difficulty is the synchronization. Because SAR system is coherent system, it needs to keep the phase information uh, accurate very um, precisely. So if you cannot control the time synchronization, that will um, uh, get a very poor state result from the uh, data. And also you need to do some motion compensation because uh, in different platforms, that is hard to control the same level um, motion, movement. So this is the two terms, I think, that if you want to build up a biostatic SAR system. Uh, thank you, Professor. Okay, very good questions. Now we, we can open one more question. Uh, hi. Uh, so, uh, Johnson, I want to ask, uh, because just now you show the uh, simulation of the Buckingham Palace, uh, the model, right? So, um, so when doing this, is it possible to track uh, where you obtain the double bonds and where is the single bonds? Oh, uh, sure. Um, now we already, uh, how to say, um, because this model used the uh, uh, PO plus SBR, and it can divide for the first bouncing, second bouncing, and third bouncing, and fourth bouncing. Uh, we used four stage for the simulation. So the result can divide into uh, first bouncing, second bouncing. So you can uh, learn from the result uh, what is the uh, surface gathering, what is the double bounce, and um, on the at the res, uh, rest of them, uh, we call that uh, volume scattering. Mm -hmm. So, so that means the the figure that you're showing here is the summation of all. Yeah, sure. Yes. I see. I see. And yes. may I ask? Uh, maybe I missed it, but which uh, wavelength are you using here for the simulation? And this is for the C band. Oh, that's why it looks qu pretty coarse. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just one quick question. Okay, so no, no um, I I think I read about a statement in some paper. Okay, because just mm -hmm. now you mentioned about the corner reflector, right? Mm -hmm. So the statement in the paper is saying something like, uh, for people who use corner reflector to, for example, for any you know geodetic measurements, okay, such as mm -hmm. like a ground anchor. In order to achieve one centimeter of um, accuracy or precision, the corner reflector mm -hmm. needs to be 4.5 meter in size. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a, I mean, is that a correct statement? Because corner reflector can be designed by its uh, radar cross section, determined by the, 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 I mean, the size can determine, it has a um, deterministic. Uh, mathematic formula. So, mm -hmm. if you want to calculate the uh, corner reflector size, you can just use the formula to to do that. Wow. There is no problem, mm -hmm. uh, except for the calculation from mathematical uh, mathematical uh, formula. You can use also use I mentioned here. You can put into the uh, simulation for the. Um, some software like we call, like uh, uh, this is called FECO, FECO, F-E-K-O, like this. And for the FEM, uh, we have uh, HFSS. Uh, it's very common software for uh, the antenna design and CST for the uh, FTDD based on the this um, method. So uh, all of the three can to uh, can do the simulation for the corner factor. But then how, how is the size of, uh, sorry, this may be a very naive question, but how, how does the size of, of corner reflector affect the 
uh, geodetic or the ranging accuracy? Actually, um, that is two. <laughs> that is two questions because um, for the range resolution, you need to determine its bandwidth. For example, like this. If you think that is a point target, it's in. Uh, I mean, that is in one cell, in one pixel. We call that point target uh, behavior. But if you, the, the size of uh, the corner vector is bigger than uh, the big, bigger than one range resolution, we call that uh, extend target. But it will act. It will still act like a um, point target uh, behavior because the corner vector. Or well, maybe I can check the uh, formula for you to determine the uh, the size of corner vector. Yeah, because. Okay. Uh, there is also a very good uh, reference paper or reference book that can provide uh, information according to the um, strong theoretically uh, discussion. Yeah. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lina. You are a very, very good question. But uh, so we respect uh, Dr. Zina. She she not only a very good listen uh, listen listener and learner, but also uh, her questions is a uh, very useful, especially for uh, for the for the application of a geological. Uh, but uh, I, I see maybe uh, recently we will also ask uh, invite that. Dr. Ling to deliver her uh, very good uh, talk about the application of SA uh, prior to uh, geological. Okay, I see maybe later we will talk about um, this this invitation to Dr. Ling and please stay tuned. Hi, Dr. Ku, cool. this is student from Professor. And my question is, um, how to build out a web propagation in a random medium and how to analyze it? Thank you. For the random media, it because um, is the, um, we do that in the static way because it's determined for its uh, static parameters. So uh, we generate a random service according to its uh, correlation length and also IMS height to generate the um, um, the sample here, and for example, like uh, on this surface, we generate um, one hundred and twenty eight sample um, both in in both direction, and take the uh, covariance um, function as a Gaussian, so you can see the um, co correlation length or correlation function is a Gaussian distribution, and. If you analyze it into the histogram, you can see the um, um, distribution, the PDF, uh, the possibility function is a Gaussian distribution, and also do the covariance analyze, you can see the uh, Gaussian uh, correlation um, function here. So <clears throat> after the generator uh, model here, we can put that into the simulation then you can also learn from the uh, focus image to do the um, analyze. And then both of them has a very good agreement with the uh, um, PDF. Because of this sample you generate, right? And then you use some EM wave um, to, um, to do some interaction, then collect the echo signal and then do the image uh, focusing the, to do the image um, to get a focus image. And then you do the analyze on the uh, focus image. You can see also um, Gaussian in possibility function and also uh, Gaussian for the um, correlation function. And on the other hand, if you change the correlation to the exponential, um, will show some um, different um, structure here. And then 
the first thing we do here will um, it will remain the uh, PDF as a Gaussian function, but the correlation function will be you know, exponential correlation function. Then uh, uh, apply this method to get the final result, and you can analyze the uh, final focus image, and then. Um, the result shows the uh, amplitude in Gaussian distribution, and uh, uh, the for the co covariance function, we'll get the uh, exponential correlation function. So it's not uh, hard to um, analyze for the um, random media, and and we also can uh, divide that into, um, as I said. Uh, the first bounce, second bounce, and multi bounce in the same way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. So uh, let's uh, thanks again for uh, Dr. Ku, uh, who delivered a very good talk uh, for today's seminar. And I see the object of our, of our, our TSU mini sa seminar series should be uh, not only bri as a bridge uh, as a bridge link uh, engineering students and uh, sci uh, scientists major students to, uh, thinking together and working together but also we we, we have encouraged all the all the uh, multidisciplinary expert can also make use of this very stable uh, technology of SAR that can benefit all the, all the uh, application in, in the world. So here uh, we are very uh, grateful to thanks again, Dr. Ku, uh, this very good talk today. So let's finally have a a big have a big hand again to appreciate his uh, talk today thank you. thank you everyone okay so hopefully we uh, we will uh, continue our uh, this uh, mini sa seminar series uh, uh, in the near future and we are uh, we are going to invite a more uh, scholar that can contribute to this uh, mini SARS seminar series. Okay, thanks. Thanks all of you to join our seminar series. And I hope to see you soon. Please stay tuned and we will get a new announcement about the new talk uh, in our TSU web, web link. Please stay tuned and see you soon. Thank you. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Thank you, Johnson. Great talk. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, bye thank bye. you. Thank you, Dr. Lee.